like we said, like I was saying before we went on break, uh, Khalid figured out something. He he knows the secret sauce, the for he's Mr. Hinge, Doctor Hinge, Doctor Hinge, Doctor. Mr. Tinder, the the King B, <laughs> what el- whatever else like Cupid, Cupid's arrow. I don't the, know. The, the Zeus call me. The the yeah. Zeus call me. Oh, yeah. No, if you want to get your dick sucked in the next two days, listen up, boys. <laughs> <laughs> We're not. <laughs> Yo, I'm trying to help people find love though. Like five four three two one welcome welcome back to the gain experience points podcast nice we talk about everything here in the anime otaku gaming nerd fitness health and honestly whatever the fuck we want to talk about type of space Mm -hmm. and I'm here with my co-host as always, my bro, my 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 dog, my doggo, my, my, <laughs> my doggy dog. dog. <laughs> yeah, so this is Jordan uh, underscore exp is my Instagram handle. Everything. I'm Jordan. It's Riley. Doggo Riley. Hey 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 hey. You know what's weird? What's up? I, I feel like there's someone else here. I feel like there's it's like who. Dude, dude, what, what is this? What dude, is this? Well, I can fucking hear him out of my ear. I know. I know. <laughs> dude, it's so weird having three mics right now. Yeah. The shit's Yo. like fucking, it, it's breaking ba- boundaries, dude. All right, all right, all right. Jokes aside, let's introduce our first time guest and um, first time uh, first time for many, hopefully. Uh, this is mm-hmm. Khalid, our, our probably the... Uh, busiest fucking 21 year old i've ever met in my life <laughs> most hustler 21 year old i've ever met in my life and uh grinds more than anyone else i know both literally and figuratively oh no real <laughs> <laughs> real you know you know i gotta keep it on the dance floor you feel me uh, but uh anyways yeah my name is khalid um my name is khalid alman dean i go to university of california berkeley um i am visiting jordan right now we used to be co-workers back in the day and um I also own a couple different business ventures, um, but right now I've been kind of stationary because of uh, academics. But um, in the past, I've worked with like influencers, um, helped them develop companies and businesses. I've also done like freelance consulting. I've helped these guys with their marketing structure. Oh yeah, uh, dude! Every everything you see on Instagram and now TikTok is because of this man right here. It's yes, like, sir. dude. There was like a hot minute where we just were refusing to use TikTok. <laughs> and he called. Uh, he called me and Riley one day. He was like, "You fucking old man." <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, it's fucking hard to manage all that shit, but yeah. uh, we're here, so. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, yeah, with that being said, you know what I mean? I'm working on a couple of different projects right now. I'm, I'm working on like a, a dating profile profile optimization, uh, which I've also helped Riley with before. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Just so you know, the only reason, well, not the only reason, but a big part of the reason <laughs> I was able to I was able to end up with my girlfriend right now is because of uh, Khalid, actually. So, yeah, I mean, it's Dr. Hinge. Dude. Dr. Hinge. <laughs> Dr. <God>. Hinge. <laughs> and that's the, that, that website's taken, so no one, mm, no one grabbed that shit. Actually. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would be like the Tinder equivalent of that? I guess like Dr. Flame. Dr. Flame? <laughs> Dr. Flame, bro. Oh my God. Mr. Tinder? <laughs> you have like the, the mother branch, like yeah, Dr. Yeah, yeah. Hinge, and then you've got like Mr. Like Professor Fling, and so then like, like Professor the, Cupid. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the Beehive. No, oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. The queen bee or the king bee or the something. The king shit. bee, dude, that's fire. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fire one. Uh, shit. All right. Um, but yeah, man, no, it's a, uh, it's cool to have you on here. It's definitely, uh, we definitely been wanting to have him here ever since he started helping us with our marketing shit. I mean, this guy is, this, this guy is young, but he knows his shit. Like, uh, what some people, I mean, you can't call them out, but like, what's what's like some things you used to do for like social media people? Yeah, so like, I mean, I've done a lot of representation for influencers, like helping them get like close different brand deals with some like really large brands like Bumble, Lululemon, things like that. Um, and I also work for an influencer management company right now um, as a BDR sales representative, helping them like close deals with like some of the largest brands in the world, Fenty, Dermatologica, and like uh, other businesses like that. And then I've also done like strategy for like some smaller brands and smaller companies um, to get influencer marketing incorporated into their um, business strategy as well um, to help drive traffic and things like that. So I've kind of just been all around consulting, freelancing, um, developing companies for people as well, um, helping influencers get paid. That's awesome, dude. Like, yeah, uh, yeah man. Like, OK, first of all, I got to I got to address this. Like, first of all, this is going to be a little different of a podcast, obviously. Uh, 
you know, our normal thing is in the fitness and health and like nerd space, but uh, we wanted to cover other things too. Like we're obviously business people, like everything's a fucking business. Me and Riley's been working on this as a business for a while. We talked about this. So it's in the future, we're definitely going to have more people with just interesting stories and interesting things to tell. And Khalid's going to be the front liner for that. He's going to be the headliner. Uh, we're going to have him, uh, his big, big, fat, pretty face on this on the thumbnail. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just a close-up right here, right now. Right that, like that face. Look at that. Sir. I'm taking that exact <laughs> headshot now. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but one yes, thing sir. I think we wanted to uh, cover is that. So to give you a little little uh, insight into how we all, all three of us met um, in terms of me and Riley meeting Khalid. started with me and Khalid working in the same company at uh, – a company that I'm not going to speak about uh, for <laughs> legal reasons. Yeah. Uh, but we were uh, we were both salesmen for that, which is fucking insane. This guy was like 20 when he started uh, as a sales rep for this for the same company, and then we were just we kind of clicked as the two youngest guys, and honestly, the two only non-white guys. Yeah. <laughs> nice, dude. The minorities yeah. of, the, uh, of the company. Uh, we also say that we were the minority hires. That's <laughs> real, bro. Hey, tech. That, that in tech, oh, I was about to say that. In yeah. tech, yeah, it's like that, dude. Like, yeah. you look at, even like at our tech job, it's like 80% white, I would say. Oh, yeah. And there's like, there's like a sprinkle, you get that sprinkle of like, black hispanic asian <laughs> just pepper them with it yeah, yeah. throw yeah. a couple just, in bah, bah. there and they're never in leadership positions too which is like what's never, hella crazy like never, yeah. Yeah. maybe like a cto mm -hmm. like here and there but like that's about it bro like mm -hmm. <laughs> dude you know what's the funniest thing like I, I was like the guy who's the head of asia for our company <laughs> oh he's a white guy isn't <laughs> yeah, he? he's australian <laughs> i forgot about that <laughs> yeah i mean like from the public eye it looks super diverse because like you said like the cto cio blah 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 yeah, like, yeah, yeah. the c-level execs are all like diversified or they're women yeah. but then like as soon as you hit that vp level everything down is all like well not all but it's mostly like white people oh and yeah. one of the hubs is straight out of like nashville or something like that too yeah. so i don't know man <laughs> i mean hey hey look you know that's that's the reality of mm. of it i mean that's why you know it's it's cool to see uh, other people starting out their ventures uh and whatever they want to do so one thing um oh yeah going back into that story though how me and Khalid met we were just we were we were shooting shit at this uh we <laughs> we would make calls and everything and it's like it's just like a you know bullpen sales room and Wolf of Wall Street. Wolf of Wall Street. Dude. That's a fuck. Bro, our manager was literally Jordan Belfort. He literally like, just say whatever the fuck you want on the, on the phone and just, just make the uh, sale. I don't give a shit. Cocaine tables, it's... bro. That shit was crazy. <laughs> cocaine at the WeWork? Like... Cocaine at the WeWork, bro. It was... Drinks everywhere and shit. I don't, know what the, I don't know what the fuck was going on. There was a big ass gong in the room, too. Yeah, there was a gong in the middle. Every single sale you made was just like, boom! <laughs> Motherfuckers taking like whole ass glasses of vodka and just sipping on that shit. They're interviews that shit was something like 9 a.m interviews or like 3 p.m like i'm walking out the bro, door like interviews. 11 11 a.m people <laughs> would show up just fucking drunk on the phones bro on phone calls i i, I just yeah i just remembered this guy who was like uh who's sitting who was sitting down and he was like our uh our customer success guy so basically he was like talking to our uh to just um, any anyone who's working with the product, whatever product, there was no product. <laughs> oh yeah, spoiler alert: there was no product. There that's why no we're not working. Fucking yeah, they product. were selling thin air in an idea. Yeah, uh, sold that's the why. Fuck out of thin air, dude. We, we did. <laughs> dude, you fucking sold that air, bro. Sold the fuck out of thin air. Yeah, so we uh, for that's why legally we cannot say <laughs> what's what happens because obviously because the company went under yeah um but y'all can figure it out if you really wanted to try google that shit it's we work hard. goes under san diego area oh and yeah then you just start going through them yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah so they're, they're, this is the craziest environment but we met some of the most interesting people i've ever met in my life Sucks. both good and bad and just like the our manager was straight up like i said jordan belfort he just he literally when i was training with him showed me a clip from wolf of wall street and says just do that <laughs> no way bro multiple fucking clips that what was uh mean, was, was that training did you guys get paid for that <laughs> <laughs> like official like training from bro we used to have whole ass conference rooms and he would just show clips of wolf of wall street <laughs> no I, to way. be fair though like to be <laughs> no. fair this man is phenomenal at selling like it's not even a fucking joke probably the best salesman I've ever seen in my entire life 
No, high, like high key, just like it, the greatest salesman ever. It, it's crazy, bro. Coming with the backwards cap on, some fucking flip flops, and some khakis. Bro, and just <laughs> that sounds some like that sounds like he came straight from PB. They live in Pacific Beach. Oh no, he, yeah, lives, he lives. Yeah, in he PB. did. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, dude was dude was fucking insane. It was. It, I remember like during the last hours of of sales, it was just be like. It's like, all right, everyone who sets a meeting, we take a shot in a room full of six salesmen. <laughs> <laughs> and you guys Just, are pretty good, too, from what I heard, right? Like, yeah. you guys are actually making it happen or what? Fuck, dude. My. Fuck, yeah, we were. I um, fucking created, like, a lead gen strategy. There we go. And that shit was crazy. I dropped that shit on everyone's desk. It's called the self-sourcing Bible. And then once I instituted that shit, bro, we started going ham, bro. Like, we started selling like fucking crazy. I taught Jordan how to do that shit. We just started making money after money after money, and then we got like what two hundred and ninety accounts in like four months. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, just again, I want this to be a very bottom line thing. There was no product. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the day, they weren't selling it. We weren't selling shit, and we were getting paid. We were selling like it was like one hundred fifty dollars every single time. We we're getting paid, and Jordan fucking sold a caterer, and we weren't even selling the caterers, and that shit was insane. Like. Like we weren't even, our product didn't even serve. We didn't even have a product, and the product that we were trying to, like the idea we were selling, wasn't even servicing that product. Jordan still sold them. Like, it was, <laughs> <laughs> the computers, bro, were like a hundred and fifty dollar pawn shop computers. That shit used to freeze in the middle of the thing, and like we wouldn't even have fucking cameras on, bro. Like, um, like our, our, we didn't have like webcams. Like half the computers didn't have webcams. Yeah. Um, until like two months in, bro. Like we used to be in the middle of a presentation, it would fucking freeze. Still sold. That, yeah, it, dude, crazy. it was we like we did the most weirdest shit to make it happen. Like I'm sure, dude. Like okay, mm. bottom line, we're all salesmen. Riley's a salesman. He ha- he's all he's done some shit too. And ah, oh God, what was some, what was some crazy shit? I remember. By the way, this might be a little off topic, but you've had the most sketchiest jobs of all time. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> it. Aside from the company you guys were just talking about. Like you had some sketchy ass jobs, dude. I'm just gonna say it. Oh god. Like paid under the table in cash and shit like that. Like uh let's see. Let me like look. what are like what's like besides that company, what's like another like fucked up job that you had? Because I feel like you've told me all these fucked up jobs you've had. What's like another fucked up job that you like really had, honestly? Um dude, let me think, let me think. <laughs> I thought the I thought the food yeah, job that you had was pretty terrible though, because they would like pay you under the table and they never give you credit for making that whole ass menu and things like that. So Oh dude. Um It's just a restaurant industry in general. It's it's hard to say how like fucked up that position was or anything like my uh, of that of my cooking positions in, in previous positions. This is like that whole industry is, is just like mental. Like that, that mm-hmm. whole industry is either you find a really good place and you're in a good place mm-hmm. and you get credited for your work in, in a sense, or you just, or you're just fucked. Like yeah. there's, there's just no in between. Like I remember going to work one day at a sushi restaurant I used to work for. Mm-hmm. And, um, <laughs> I just, I walked in and they're like, Hey, yo. So, uh, Jose, the ramen guy, um, he got arrested. I was like, for what? <laughs> uh, he's, uh, did you not see the cop cars outside? I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh, he, that's him in the car. <laughs> Damn, I was no like, yo, what way. the fuck happened to Jose? And he's like, oh, he got caught with cocaine <laughs> right before he walked into uh, the restaurant. That's not that bad. Come on, no, come no, on. he was like, <laughs> no, he got caught selling cocaine out the restaurant. Oh, oh behind the sushi joint. I'm fucking weak. I mean, honestly, like the first time, like cause I grew up in Stockton, like there, there's no fucking, like, there's no money out there. Like, people want money, like, mm. you know, people smoke weed because like it, it's it's cheap. Is there nothing? To, what is there to do in Stockton? Um, like? Violence. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Just like, but like Shit. what I'm trying to say though is like basically like um, I've never seen cocaine until I was in the restaurant industry, and then like there's all these servers who just keep on doing coke and coke and coke. And I was like, bro, what the fuck is going on? I was like, how are people affording this? Yeah. Um, and yeah, when I was working in the restaurant industry, like two people overdosed um, and, and passed away actually, and it's like it, it's crazy how like people get criminalized all the time for like weed and stuff, but mm-hmm. like coke, like in corporate America and also like in industries like that like they, they don't really get caught up um but yeah no nah, like it's a it's i think it's just because it's like a it's such it's weird because i've realized as we grew up in like in 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 corporate america mm-hmm. and doing like sales each job especially in sales sales industry, for sure sales yeah. and in um in like the industry i was in in like in restaurants and food business and hospitality it's like 
it's pretty fucking rampant. Like I didn't realize how rampant it was. We were just in the, uh, we were just talking about it. We were at a company party and we were just <laughs> chilling there. And this is totally a fucking our story. Like we, me and him, we're talking to this other guy Dude. and we're talking about Batman. Dude, we're yeah. <laughs> okay, go for it. Go. We're literally talking about uh, the Batman movie. Uh, and whether or not it's better than the uh, original Christian Bale one, which yeah. it's, it's not. All right, go. <laughs> Continue with your story. Go, go. What? What's you up? can see his face on that. And then <laughs> while we're talking, we're just having a conversation about Batman. Uh, the, the fucking, the, every, the, every other salesperson was in the bathroom doing lines of coke. Just back and forth in a circle like it was a fucking weed circle. <laughs> Dude, I thought that was sh- that shit was epic too. Cause you had like two polar opposites within like six feet of each other. You had like the crack or you had the the coke addict salespeople doing it in the bathroom. Then you had all the sweaty nerds talking about like fucking Batman, Batman. <laughs> in the living room. That shit was kind of crazy actually. Yeah, we were it, we were like just talking about Batman and just casually taking shots of tequila. It's like just like no, this one is better. Yeah, and they're just out like one of the one of them was carrying the a new puppy, just like holding oh, it. Yeah, there was a brand new puppy at that party too. <laughs> what that was the crazy. Fuck is going on. Yeah, no, it was pretty wild. Um, yeah, no, yeah. definitely. I was, but <sighs> sketchiest job. Um, okay, like obviously the company yeah that, that company is, is definitely the sketchiest but um i think the sketchiest one in general was just like i guess working at the food stand the, yeah. the food stand was just there was like obviously you paid on the table you weren't paid tip like you you just like you just hired a bunch of college students to try to make it work like hey like i get it like startup you try to do what you can but still that was like a, that was a little that was a little weird like there was there was a couple moments where i remember near um some of them were some of them were like um we're like, oh, we're, we're like pay. We're like part of the reason, part of like the pay is like just like, you know, um, being like a guide and mentor to you. I was like, nah, dude, fuck. Like, oh my I'm God, working, bro. bro. Like, I need <laughs> yeah, money. Like, I'm a college yeah, student. Like, unpaid internships, bro. Like, that shit is so predatory. Like, because the only people that could actually do unpaid internships are like people that are affluent and have money and like don't have to like pay yeah. their way. It's like their parents have money and they could like stay at home and like live rent free and all that. So, yeah. yeah. It's, but I, I think. Like I, I do, I, I have to like I say that, but also I do kind of like, I, I respect the people, like the I just didn't I respect the people who who like started the business as, they were the, they were my bosses and they did teach me a lot, but at the same time like I would I run Gainy XP, the same way no I wouldn't like right I wouldn't I wouldn't use those same practices obviously it's a different type of business but at the same time like it, it teaches you it teaches mm-hmm. you you learn and. I still respect them as people who made it affluent in their in their uh, in their space, but the way they handled things, I just kind of don't agree with it. Mm-hmm. Again, that's just uh, my personal opinion on that. Um, that's probably the sketchiest uh, outside of obviously that one. And then, um, I fucking hated selling wine, bro. <laughs> that was yeah. fucking ass, dude. Dude, that's I lived with you at that time, and you'd wake up at like ungodly hours, dude. I'd be like, "How does this man do it?" It'd be like four a.m., and you'd be like out the door, bro. Gotta pay the bills, bro. <laughs> no, that was four, bro. I I used to wake up at two or three. Dude, sometimes you would, yeah. and like I'd be sleeping, I'd be like, "Who the fuck's breaking into our house?" And then it'd just be you trying to go sell fucking red wine or some shit like that. <laughs> yeah. What's the sketchiest jobs you did? Obviously, other than I mean, other than the the company that I worked at, there was this other company in Sacramento. Um, this is when I first 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 got into fucking sales and um the company i was working for in sacramento like it was we used to sell like wi-fi services um in different parts of the central valley so we'd be in stockton sacramento uh yuba city Mm. um and we used to sell these wi-fi services we'd have to stop people in the store and like sell them the services but that's not what made the job sketchy i mean like beyond beyond that you know i mean it's already a really hard thing to do in sales is trying to stop and sell people and switch them to comcast Mm -hmm. but what made it sketchy was like it was an mlm (laughs) so so i used to go in there i used to go in there it's like if you're not early you're late and it was just like super culty culture go in you do like you write it out you're like affirmations and and shit like that and you have to like i'd have to wear a suit just to take off the suit and then like we would have locked commission bro like that shit was horrible that's fucking nasty it was like bro it's like you have to get eight sales this week if you don't get eight sales this week, it's going to roll over to next week and you're not going to make any commission and then we're going to put you to part time. <gasps> and they sold Dude. them like this weird dream like, oh, you can be an owner. You can be an owner. Like I know people in that company that be there for like five, six years. People who moved states, cities, people who dropped out of college 
just to pursue this and to potentially get this million dollar bonus but not no. really realizing like bro like it's not possible we would sit in like in circles and like do like ring a gong every time people got sales but like it was like really weird like bells would ring bells and like jump around and then we would have to like they would have these like what events the <laughs> it's basically that a cult, bro. Super culty, it was yeah. a cult, bro. Like, <laughs> and we would like take notes. It's like half the job was just taking notes about like the company, and then like what we would do, bro. That shit was crazy. We would go to these events. Did they make you drink Kool Aid too, <laughs> <laughs> dude. The people in there would have fucking drank Kool Aid, bro. I'm telling you, like not me, bro. I was just trying to secure the bag, bro. I had rent to pay. You're trying to get that million dollar bonus. Yeah, so, so like, I'm trying to get Kool Aid. I was, I was, I was even trying to get that, bro. I was at the company for a month. Uh, don't look at my resume. Uh, but anyways, like uh, I was at that company and like we they'd, they'd have these events like outside of work and they would be like, oh, it's not mandatory, but they'd be, people get hella mad at you if you don't show up. Be like, bro, what the, like, how's this mandatory? And then you have to show out like an hour early. And I'm, I'm not getting paid for that, bro. Like, and um, I worked there for about a month. Um, I like excelled hella far, did well in the sales thing. Like, they're like, oh yeah, you'd be like, blah blah blah. I'm like, uh, nah, like I just need a check. So I dipped and I started working at Sprint. <laughs> nice. like, how about that. you what's the what's the sketchiest job you ever did man um well i don't think okay so what made the job sketchy wasn't the job itself yeah it was the fucking culture of the job because it was the job i held right before the one that we have right now oh dude um, dude you need to tell the bible dude, thing yeah no that's <laughs> what i'm gonna talk about it was fucking toxic as fuck like it was like if you reversed like liberal toxicity onto like conservatives if the like imagine walking to an office and everyone's like yeah i wouldn't get the fucking vaccine because like it's gonna give me like three eyes or some shit or like i read this article dude like they literally are so fucking conservative there but i remember like on a team outing event my the ceo of the company it's a small company but the ceo of the company was out with our team um and he pulled me aside and he started asking me questions about like god and stuff um and i was like yeah i don't know how i feel about this but i just like brushed it off i was like whatever like i'm not gonna take action on this because like whatever his intentions are good but i don't agree with it or whatever so whatever i just ignored it and then he like asked me to go to lunch with him and i knew what was happening but i <laughs> he didn't say why i was like why do you want to go and he's like oh i just like want to like bond or whatever and we went and he handed me a Bible. I still have it in my room, actually, just in case I want to sue the company for some reason. And he si- he signed it. Like, he p- wrote his name. Like, he wrote it out. And he dated it, too. And he puts, like, to, like, my one of my favorite employees, I hope God finds you or something like that. And that's what made that job sketchy, was I was holding onto this Bible just in case they fired me so I could sue the company and take all the money. But... I talked to lawyers. You can't sue a company if the owner of the company gives you a Bible unless they fire you. Then you can. But I walked away from that company because the toxicity aside from that was like all right wing, like all day. And if you said anything liberal, they would just fucking gaslight the fuck out of you. It was like really toxic. Oh, I, I would. I want to make it clear real quick before we we continue. Like political statements. Like oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, 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 <laughs> no. Not not between My us. Bad. Not between us. But like just in general, like political spectrum like we personally don't care what what you are like it's right. more so that what we're trying to say is that look like whoever you are whatever you believe in that's fine as long as you do so and respect other people yeah just Res- don't bring it to the workplace and give me a bible please like yeah. that's all i'm asking yeah, but that was that was a sketchy job not because of the job itself which also was sketchy by the way but like Dude, the main part of it <laughs> The main part of it was the the culture. I actually never thought I cared about company culture until I had that job. And I was actually like, you know what? This shit actually fucking matters. Because if you don't like paying attention, you're going to walk into a cult of Bible givers. Uh, and I'm like, fuck this, Fucking dude. people ringing bells, bro. Like, <laughs> I don't under. I was like, I still don't understand that shit, bro. I was, like I was 17. Dance. I was 17. And I was like, this is fucking horrible. I was like, people actually believe this shit? I was like, this is all cap. Like, no way is any of this shit true. I nah. was like... Fuck, I just needed a job and then that job just elevated the fuck out of my career. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's definitely like that. Cause I think that's it's like low key part of the people who build company culture, like that, they want to kind of make that happen, I feel like. Mm. Cause you want you want a little bit uh you want a little bit of um that kind of like loyalty to the business. And it really, you can see it even like in the best workplaces too. Mm. Like, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with wanting loyalty from your customer, from your, not your customer, you from your client, from your. Pay them. 
Yeah, you pay mm-hmm. them uh, from your for your Benefits. employees. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not that hard, bro. Like, <laughs> just leave them. Let up. them work remote. Like, I don't know. <laughs> Dude, we did a. Oh my god, sorry, but we did a Zoom call one time sorry, at one of my man. old jobs, and it was everybody. And it was a small company. It was like forty of us. Yeah. And there was like the head of HR or whatever, and she's like. So what do you guys look? What do you guys want? Like, what do you? What are we not giving you that we could give you guys? I mean, everybody was like, higher pay, higher pay, and we everyone was raising their hands. They pick somebody. We want to get paid more, and so they just eventually stopped taking questions. They're like, all right, any questions aside from getting higher pay? Like, we understand you guys want to get paid more, and nobody said anything. <laughs> <laughs> and they just ended the Zoom call. <laughs> they were like, all right, well, if no one has any questions. One time, uh, it's fucking crazy, bro. At a place I used to work at they had a they sent a survey out to everyone <laughs> on like a hr review of like the company and company culture right yeah like, what would you like to see differently with stuff you know what's the most fucked up thing it what's was that? required to put your name down no oh, <laughs> no <hell> no. <laughs> no bro i was uh, i was i was ballsy enough to like just be like fuck it and i wrote everything down and i sent it over <laughs> And then they had they pulled me aside and talked about it. I was like, I was like, I can't like I can't believe you like blah 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 like this. And I was like, you asked, <laughs> dude. The fact that they oh, asked you for your name is so fucking funny. Oh my god. Yeah, no, I was like, <laughs> bro, HR is never your friend. Like, I I don't know, I don't want to stress this enough to people. Like, HR is not your friend, bro. Like, they're hired from the company. Like, they're not trying to help you out. They're trying. To, they're in the best mm-hmm. interest of the company. Like it's that's why i never put in a two-week notice i never put in a two-week notice yeah i stopped doing that shit bro <laughs> like especially in my last company i saw people try and do that and they would just snip them right there it kind of fucks you over and i'm like bro that's sucks. no because that's happening i've been snipped right away and i'm like oh you bro like i was just trying to be nice but like yeah yeah, yeah. i think it really depends on the company i've had pretty good experiences with people that i respect where i'm like okay i give a month or two weeks notice and they respect that the only thing they did ask is um when i worked for the wine company they were like all right, uh, are you working with a competitor? And they're like, and I was like, no. And he was like, cool, just keep it, it's fine. But like they had like that thing, it was on the contract. I was like, all right, whatever, that's fine. Um, anyways, we're going to run into our break soon, and then uh, we'll talk a little bit more about Khalid's uh, date. I want to kind of run into some of uh, more details about Khalid's dating algorithm stuff, because I think that would be kind of interesting. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. All right, yeah. cool. Oh, you know what we fucking forgot to do? Hey, yo, grab, hit the box. Oh, yeah, hit the box. Yeah. Oh, oh, fuck, never mind. <laughs> yeah, bro, that shit was not on, bro. Dude, look at the audio waves on the podcast. Hey, we got it. <laughs> there we go. Nice, right. dude. Yo, yo, yo. Like we said, like I was saying before we went on break, uh, Khalid figured out something. He he knows the secret <laughs> sauce The for he's Mr. Hinge. Dr. Hinge. Dr. Bro. Hinge, Dr. Mr. Hinge. Tinder the the king d <laughs> what else, whatever else like cupid cupid's arrow i don't the, know the, the zeus call me the the yeah, zeus call me? I don't yeah. Know, if you want to get your dick sucked in the next two days listen up boys <laughs> <laughs> we're not <laughs> no i'm trying to help people find love though like oh not, well right? no that's they that's not true it depends hey. on what you're going for like if, if everyone's different like yeah that's real i mean different strokes different, different priorities you know yeah we're, we're what's it called we'll uh you know, whatever whatever you're looking for, whether that's just to play around or anything, um, <laughs> I think you should listen to the next couple, uh, next 30 minutes at the very least. Yeah, nah, for sure. So um, for me, right, like I was I was like, before I got in my relationship, I was like, now nah, I'm in a relationship, you know. Um, but like prior to that, like I was really, really on the dating apps and I just kind of got really tired of like swiping on a bunch of people, getting matches, trying to like cipher through it. And like a lot of these conversations would just go nowhere. They would just go ghost, they'll go dead. And I know a lot of other guys feel the same pain. And um, it kind of just reminded me of cold calling. Like you would, you would like message a hundred people and then you'd get like two responses and then like one person would start an actual conversation and then like maybe you meet up, maybe you don't meet up. But what I like kind of theorized is like, it's not that there's not enough quality people in the world. It's just the way that people are presenting themselves. And that's not yielding the best results for them. So I started optimizing profiles just for friends. And um, all of them have had significant success rates um, in comparison to what was done prior. Dude had like fucking a notebook listening to like, all right, what was your swipe success rate? What was it? <laughs> he was like writing this shit down, taking de- data analytics on that shit. You ain't wrong, bro. I mean, <laughs> you're not wrong. I did data dumps. I looked at blog posts. I looked at everything. Just like really understanding like what what is wrong with these dating apps? Like why are they not working? Like 
mm-hmm. you know it's it's like no secret like 40 percent of people nowadays they meet on dating apps like, it's the number one way that people meet their their significant other their partner it's 2022 bro like this is how people link up and it's like especially but, during covid but they suck especially during covid <laughs> but they're horrible. And like for me, when I figured it out, bro, it was honestly, I was in Berkeley. Um, and I was on vacation. This is before I moved to Berkeley. I was looking for housing because like housing situation is horrible in Berkeley. That's a story for another day. Um, but I was looking for housing in Berkeley. I was living in San Diego. I came up here and um, I saw these dudes um, at the bar and they were like, they're like international students and then they came up and just like grabbed a girl i was like bro what do they do this she like smacked him and i was like what is going on i was like this is so weird and then uh after that i was like i just saw that like a couple different times and i was like wow it's like they just don't you know understand like what what the culture's like Mm -hmm. and stuff here and then i had my friend at the time he came up to me he's like look bro like i need help with my dating profile like i'm not gonna get any matches so i'll open up bro's profile (laughs) And when oh, I open up Bro's profile, I'm like, damn, this makes hella sense. Uh, why you're not getting matches? And I was like, I, I looked at it and it was like we had like three selfies. Um, and then we had like it's just a huge red flag if you have selfies. That means like, you know, uh, objectively from people, like if you don't have if you have a bunch of selfies in your profile, you probably don't have like a lot of like, you know, social friends. partners or friends. Yeah. Mm. Essentially like you don't have a lot of friends. Um, so like, I looked at him and the like, the outfits were the same in each photo too. So I was like, that's also a red flag. Like, you know, you got to switch up your <laughs> outfits and it looked like it was all taken the same day in the same area in the same location. And I was like, bro, do you not have like other photos of yourself? And he's like, you know, honestly, like I, I got out of a relationship and like when people get out of relationships, most of the photos they have, unfortunately, are with their, their ex partners. Partner. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like three years. It's like, okay, that's understandable. Um, like you're not a bad guy, but like, so what we did is we uh, ended up going to different parts of Berkeley, taking photos, um, and then after I did that, I uh, fixed up the bio a little bit. There was no bio prior. Had about like five different photos. Had a group photo, um, just a lot of different places, like museums, libraries, things like that, um, of things that he was interested in genuinely, and made the photos look authentic and not hella edited. And he just started getting a bunch of matches and a lot of likes, and you know. He's in a relationship now because that's what those apps are ultimately for is to either get in a relationship or, you know, hook up. But like, so what's the, what's the number one mistake I think that guys do uh, when it comes to, I guess, like, let's split it up, like between your, um, between the photos and then the bio, like what's the, Mm -hmm. what's the number one, number one mistake you see when you're working with someone? It depends on what region you're in, right? So, oh, really? Like, yeah. <laughs> Damn, so, there's a lot um, of variables. Yeah, there's show. a lot of variables. Dude, I told okay. you, this guy fucking <laughs> sat down with data analytics. Dude, dude, I actually do remember you talking about that. You're like, bro, I came up to Berkeley, and I'm just like getting matches like this. There's so much competition in San Diego and like this and that. And I remember you you broke that shit down for me. Um, yeah. It's kind of crazy, though. Yeah, I, I hella did. Like, I, when I came back, I was like, bro, like, I don't know what's going on in Berkeley, but, like, I don't know why I'm getting so many matches. And it's, like, and compared to San Diego, because, like, man, I don't know. Everyone just works out here. Uh- <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, did you know uh, San Diego is, like, one of the hubs for, like, the fitness industry? Like, actually. So. I mean, it makes sense. Fitness like, is, like, a really big deal to, to people down here. Yeah. Like, I didn't really know, like, I should be eating vitamins every day until I moved to San Diego, bro. Like, everyone's like, bro, you don't have vitamins, bro? You're not, you're nice. not taking zinc, dog? Like, what are you doing? And I was like, what the <laughs> hell is going on here? Because I'm from NorCal. Yeah. Um, but anyways, like, I would say, like, one of the biggest things, um, I would say, like, for people in, like, the South, bro. Uh, so, I have some friends that are, like, in different states. Please. Please, everyone listening to this podcast, please listen to this right now because this is some real, this is some real shit I'm about to tell you. Do not have a photo with any sort of dead animal. <laughs> okay. Whoa! Like <laughs> I'm being so serious right shit. now. I do not want to see what catch you got, bro. Wait, I don't care yeah. if that's a ten pound bass. Well, what if he's trying to catch I, like a conservative woman? I, I, like, I don't. So, mm, I mean, bro, no. Wouldn't, it, any, it, wouldn't some chicks find that hot? I don't know. I mean, like the the minority of <laughs> chicks would find out. If you're into hunting, you can listen in your bio. But bro, like if that's the first photo you see is just a dead animal, so people don't wow. even post a photo of themselves with just a dead animal, bro. It's just like wait, wait, right wait. in their photo. Wait, wait, wait hold on. <laughs> Wait, nice, hold the fuck dude. on. Wait, wait super wait, wait. common. Damn, wait. that's so alpha. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, no Jordan Peterson either, or no Nelk boy shit. Like, like, bro, just, just don't put that in your bio. Like, that, don't, don't, don't do it, bro. Don't do it. Just trust me. 
I, I'm, I'm just i'm still on the fucking dead animal like they literally just crazy, they actually. just took a picture of like the deer they fucking shot yeah no it's common yeah it's, what, a, what it's, a, it's a common like, thing like it, it's like surprisingly especially really? bass fish like people always have pictures of them like five fish oh them. okay yeah. that one i, I that can understand makes that more sense bit. that makes more like, sense uh some people do just have dead animals or like they'll or like and then in the bio this is mostly in the south like this is most of the clients that work in the south um they have in their bio essentially like everything that they find wrong with women like they like literally oh, list no out way. like what they want specifically and like what is wrong with women in society and i'm like bro why would you ever portray that in your bio yeah. and like this <laughs> i sound crazy right now but like what you gotta do is go to your tinder profile if you if there are any if there are any women on this podcast y'all know my pain y'all, y'all feel what i'm saying right? <laughs> go to, go to the tinder and like see and you'll start seeing the things that i'm saying and recognizing them as soon as i start saying them on the oh. West Coast, um, for a lot of people, an issue, this is something that unfortunately Riley dealt with too, uh, was <laughs> just one? a lot of gym photos. Oh, yeah. And it's oh, just yeah. like, but the that's my whole life, pro- bro. But it can't be the whole profile. <laughs> you have so much more to offer than the gym. And then, like, photos that aren't clear there in the he gym. He's going off. <laughs> like, photos that aren't clear in the gym, too. Like, if it's over filtered and I can't see your face, like, bro, like, why do you have this in your profile? And I, okay. did I not say that? You did, yeah. I had oh, this yeah. whole, I, I remember I had this whole ass shirtless pic, too. And you're yeah. like, bro, are you trying? I thought you were trying to get in a serious ass relationship here. And I was like, I am. And he's like, dude, you can't have a fucking shirtless photo if you're trying yeah. to fucking be in a serious relationship. And he made me take that shit down. And it works, of course, because I have a girlfriend now. But yeah, I remember that. So. The- the bathroom pics, bro. Stop it. Cut it out. Mare selfies in the bathroom. No, not you. That. Not you. Not you. That. This is somebody else, bro. This is somebody else that I felt. Just need to make sure they know. No, that was not Riley. That was not Riley. I, I'll, I'll throw that out there right now. But no, that no, was no. believable though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do not have that, bro. Please, I I can't with it. Like I can't with the with the bathroom pics. Like nah, bro. And sometimes the bathroom's dirty. Like that's also a red flag. Like I don't know, man. Like, all right. dude, I love how passionate you get. Like when we really get into it, dude, I'm <laughs> you can like hear it bro. in your voice because I feel like you've gone and you've seen the pain. Like you uh, know, because I feel like you've got a good eye for that stuff, which is is like important, obviously, for like you wanting to give advice, but like. It's like some shit that Jordan and I probably couldn't see no. like right away. Dude, it would I be something that some only shit. like a certain number of people could see like you. you yeah. Know? I would like to also like make this absolutely clear for any like anyone, just girl, guy or anyone that were that's listening to this. Like the point of like what Khalid do, does is like you could you could spin it in a way that's like, oh, I'm trying. Oh, he, we're trying to help guys like uh, or like get just get girls and everything. It's like, nah, dude, mm-hmm. we're, we're trying to help them like understand that you're not going to be no one's going to like you that way unless you do this like and no respectable girl is going to like you like that and uh, you know for for the women who thinks like oh this is just like some like fuck boy shit it's like no these guys these guys are we're, these guys are portraying up them that's more fuck boyish and this guy right here he's trying to help them portray something that's more genuine than themselves because mm-hmm, I, I think yeah. there's a there's a misconception about people who work in dating and stuff is like no, we're not trying to get them like laid. We're trying to, we're trying to, or they're yeah. trying to help them with, um, with just like finding love, finding and love, like, and understanding, like putting, being genuine. Because I think a lot of guys have this like idea of like, oh, I got to put like a this this cookie cutter, like I'm fit, mm. I do this, I'm like adventurous, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a foodie or something out there, mm. and then that's when it's not really them, right? Yeah, you got it. No, no, that's that's really what it comes down to. Because like, if you really think about it, like people are not gonna pay to mm-hmm. just like sleep with people and especially my rate you ain't gonna pay my rate unless you're looking for love yeah. specifically so it's like for me it's uh more so to help people find love and help them ultimately delete these applications in the first place but just make it more optimized and more authentic to you who you actually are as a person and also respecting women because like to be completely like frank with you i've done a lot of like like interviews and stuff with like women when i when i was single of course uh, when I go on dates and talk to them about their experiences, their dating experiences, and I'm also trying to mend that as well because there's a lot of men out there that are like very disrespectful to women, and it's like not okay. And that mm-hmm. that's like in our society, like there's like women who receive very blatantly horrible texts or have had horror stories on dates of like the like men like doing things that are like not necessarily like appropriate or okay. So like this is a lot about like 
retooling and re breaking down those gender norms and really just helping people in society like understand like that's not okay that's not ethical um this isn't mm-hmm. some alpha male shit i'm not jordan peterson if you want to go get a jordan peterson book be my guest i'm not jordan peterson it's not what i'm here to do i'm here to just essentially help you optimize your profile fix your profile understand like even your texting and stuff like that too and um a lot of my clients when i vent them it's like i look at the psychological aspect of it as well because if you're not ready to date you're not ready to date some people just straight mm-hmm. up need therapy like bro i, I go to therapy like Damn. you know what i'm saying yeah. so it's like so have you so have you like suggested to want somebody you've worked with like to go see a therapist as part of like what you've done like you have you ever been like listen i just don't like maybe you wouldn't say it like this but like kind of going down the road of like listen i don't think you're like you're ready today i think you should like yep. go a hundred percent work some, on yourself or something some of these people have been in really abusive relationships um and a lot of the people that i work with in clients in the past have been through abusive relationships unfortunately and like have been through like have like mental health issues and things like that and it's like you're gonna project it on your next client you're gonna project it on your next relationship and the next person that you decide to be with um and with that being said like why i like am doing the dr hinge thing and everything like it, i mean i know i have fun with it and everything but like ultimately it is to help men that um and to help men go go see therapy and also women as well too like i have female clients as well um i've worked with female clients as well who also have to deal with just too many matches from men um because of the way their profile suggested and they they have like less quality um candidates or less quality men out there and when I alter and switch up their profile, um, it, it helps them find more quality candidates too. Nice. Yeah. And also like a lot of female clients, one of the is- biggest issues I see in like female profiles is like them projecting out mental illnesses and stuff like that, like in their bio, like mm. I'm here because I got my heart broken again. Oof. Why would you write that in your bio? <laughs> um, I'm here because yeah. my ex broke my heart or like depressed and confused. Like, I don't know. I've been on dates where like people have told me about like really raunchy stuff about like first date they'll tell me about like suicide attempts and stuff like that like like it's okay to be vulnerable but like mm. there's like adequacy to like what a first date is yeah know? yeah i think there's another thing that's really cool about this and i think that um the perception there's like old the old school perception like you said jordan peterson stuff where it's like not me i'm, I'm jordan now <laughs> jordan um, now yeah <laughs> but like there's a perception where it's like all oh, these people who are like dating coaches or something like that they're like it's uh, they're like, oh, they're just trying to teach people how, how to get laid and shit. It's like, nah, think about it in a different way. It's more like personal consultation. Like it's your life cons- life consultants, but it's in a way that's not your fucking success coach that always tells you like, go fucking read this book. Like, you know, it's a little, it's a different, but the, per- but the goal about it is to help guys understand like you can't, tr- first of all, number one, like you said, like a lot of women, get extremely bad experiences with Mm -hmm. with guys and it it turns them off a lot of the time too and um i think that it's a really good thing to because sometimes there's like in all honesty for we can all speak to this there's no teacher like sure your dad can Mm -hmm. say something or your mom may be able to say something but like there's no teacher for dating and i feel like your your teacher is fucking movies or or games or porn porn Porn, like like And then you you have this idea of like how you should portray yourself, even if it's not right, it's not genuine. Like, mm-hmm. I, th- I guess this is what I had to do to to get a girl, but at the same time, that's not what it is. Yeah, and you know what I was actually gonna say was I I had this conversation literally like last week with somebody, but I, and maybe you guys agree, maybe you don't, but I've like at, over time I kind of looked at like dating almost as like like something that should be practiced in a sense. Like mm-hmm. that's how I've always seen it because like. If you like, I've always had it in my mind, like, what if I like wasn't practicing or like, what if I wasn't like prepare myself well enough for like when the one came along? Cause then I would just like fumble the bag and like, I would kind of mess it up. So I've always seen it as like, I don't go into dates just like not expecting them to like work out. Obviously, like I still wanted it to work out yeah. when I was single, but at the same time, like if there was a failure, it was always like more of a learning lesson. Cause it's like, okay, well this is just like. Uh, opportunity for me to learn so that way when the real person comes by yeah then i'm like prepared to do the right things in order to like not mess that up for me and for her so, yeah uh, it's it's like there there is like an aspect of that too it's like um i mean you you just don't you like it's unfortunate and it's kind of sad like you just you don't learn it's a life experience thing and some people never learn and i think uh, mm-hmm. one thing that's actually really interesting i think you would find this interesting i'm not sure if i ever told you this oh, yeah. was like I was listening to uh, a, a different podcast 
I listened to other ones. That's how we got this idea. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> and they were talking about how um, there's guys who are MMA fighters, Navy SEALs, oh, you totally fuck, fucking like, you know, people who are top executives and extremely successful and like are or like extreme uh, sports people, super crazy adrenaline junkies, everyone. And they cannot go up to a club and talk to a girl. Yeah. No, I, I was going to say like a lot of the clients I've worked with at Cal specifically and like Berkeley is like a lot of engineers and things like that who are just like not comfortable in their own skin. But like the thing about it is like there's there's just other people on, on platforms that are like just like you or like have similarities like you out there. You just have to present yourself on who you mm -hmm. actually are. So I'll give you an example. There's this dude um, and he was like. I don't know what's wrong with my profile, Khalid. Like, let me, can you look at it? Um, sometimes I'll just do it for free. And I'll just be like, all right, for sure. Like, let me, let me look at your profile and I'll give him like a five minute rundown. And I was like, bro, I looked at his, at his profile. He has like three photos of a boat. I'm like, bro, <laughs> with a, with him on a boat. I'm like, nice. bro, do you own a boat? He was like, no. I was like, why are you doing that? And it was like, and I was like, are you, like, what is, what is going on with these like filters and everything like that? And I was like, why are these over filtered, bro? This does not look like, you do not look like this. Like, I'm sorry to tell you, bro. Like, you do not look like this person. Like, this is not what you look like in real life. And I, I like, I, sometimes you just gotta be real. Like, <laughs> no, but you yeah. are. That's why, no. that's what makes it funny to me is because you're like, dog, this shit, like, this profile is trash. No. <laughs> you don't even I, look like that, bro. Like, <laughs> I, I keep it, I kept it real with Riley too. I was like, no, bro. you did. You heard my feelings, and I was like, dude, you're right. And then I like stepped back. I was like, dude, this guy's actually right, bro. Yeah, I was oh. like, bro, this is not who this is not who you are. It's like, what are you doing right now? I was like, this is yeah. this profile does not actually resent Riley. And this this guy with these boats and stuff I was like, bro, like I was like, what are you doing in your free time? He's like, oh bro, I, I code, I, I'm like into art, I'm into like books. I'm like, bro, I did not get that from profile. I'm seeing in your profile is your an avid bonus. <laughs> you, you, you sail a lot for some reason. And he's like, Yeah, bro, I just like was at my homie's like uh yacht party and I, there's a boat. I was like, all right, bro, it's cool. But, like, these filters are, like, from 2010 Tumblr. Like, bro, no one's swiping <laughs> right on this. It's just not happening. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, no photos with homies. You got a selfie in here. And then he's like, you know, it's like, bro, this profile is actually successful. Look at all these matches. I was like, bro, this profile is successful. But, like, you're out here trying to find, like, a girlfriend. You can't find one. And he was, like, complaining. He's like, oh, it's because, like, woman, blah, blah, blah. Again, projecting about women. This is yeah. a very common thing. Yeah, that happens is like, oh, like you know, because of these like or the, the, this like this woman is like there's this bad woman on these platforms. Like, no, there isn't bad woman on these platforms, bro. You're just lying, yeah. and the people you're attracting aren't actual people that you're genuinely interested in. So it's mm -hmm. he's like, oh, I'm giving up on the ops. I'm giving up on the ops, bro. Like this doesn't work. This is where he's like, no, this, this definitely works. Like <laughs> I mean, like it's how, literally my girlfriend, like. It's so literally found his girlfriend. Yeah, I mean, like the the point, uh, like people who blame the apps. It's like the the thing is, like you have to understand, the apps. It, the the whole app is literally you're looking at someone's like custom made profile. Like you're looking at at them. Like it it has to work because yeah. the whole point is you're literally looking at them and you're looking at the bio bio. If it's not working, it's because you're obviously not making it the way it's right. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and there's no instructions on this, like, Tinder and Bumble and Hinge. They don't give you a, t a tour guide. Like, they give you base level stuff. And um, they, they don't really, like, they don't really care about, like, whether people are getting matches or not because, like, they want people to stay on these platforms. These people on these algorithms, they want you to stay on the platforms. And for the, like, 500,000 people out there that are paying for, that's a, that's a statistic, 500,000 people who are out there paying for a Tinder premium who are getting unlimited swipes but aren't getting matches because they're not getting the likes because i've tested out all the premium services too because i had to for research and it's like yeah you could have unlimited swipes you can have unlimited likes you can see who likes you but if your profile looks horrible like you're not going to get matches mm -hmm. so it's like easier to like understand to like work with the service where you're actually getting consultation and feedback and it's like your profile is constantly going to change because you as a human being will, will, will constantly mm. change as well. Is there a, um, actually, were you going to say something? Sorry. Oh, uh, you can go first. Go uh, I was curious. Um, is there a like actual um, statistic to say, to see if someone gets premium, does there, does the, is there a statistic that shows they actually get more like dates or relationships? I'm curious if there's like, actually that's like a thing. See, like there's data from companies that says that like suggests like, oh, you have like a, a 10x like like likelihood of like, I think Tinder claims like 10x, 5x, mm. um, something in that ballpark of like um, a likelihood of getting matches Yeah. Um, based upon like, you know, paying for premium services. But are you really going to trust data from a private corporation? And on top of it all, it's like <clears> all <throat> these companies are also owned by one company. 
Mm. So like Hinge, um, Tinder, uh, OkCupid, Zeus, all these different companies are on, all owned by the Match Group. The only one that's like the the black sheep is Bumble, and the creator of Bumble, who's badass by the way, shout out Whitney Wolf, one of the most badass CEOs I've ever seen ever, dope platform, really doing their thing, um, to make it inclusive, um, with like left tinder because she was dealing with like she was one of the founders of tinder was dealing with like just the horrible aspects of dating for women and that's why she started bumble mm. and got harassed from the creator of uh, creator of tinder um throughout her entire process until she went public she was dealing with lawsuits and allegations the match wow. group sues people all the time they even slap uh they even uh sued um uh, muzmatch uh the muslim dating service application as well because there's over 1500 dating apps out there Mm. And, and a variety of different niches and um there's just like one huge monopoly like they own majority of the dating map the, the dating market uh so that's that's why these, these platforms are into issues yeah wow. i mean that's that's crazy but um yeah i actually didn't know that they were all owned by the same people that's crazy yeah i uh well well actually what i was gonna ask i was gonna ask a question and it kind of relates because like because all these dating apps are owned by like one entity essentially aside from maybe bumble um like what? I, and I'm only asking just for people listening because I I've kind of asked you this before and I've gotten a good idea of it. But like, let's say like your priorities do align separately from just looking for something like a solid relationship. Like, are there different apps where you can go to it where you're like Hinge is more for hooking up or Tinder is more for hooking up? Like that's where you've seen the most success in that regard. Or like mm. for relationships, I know like I didn't meet my girl on any dating apps, but I know like Jordan met, did on his and he personally used coffee meets bagel. Like, mm-hmm. are there like different apps for like your, ob- like, I guess like what your object objective is going to be or like what you, what outcome I guess is desirable. I actually uh, was going to ask the same fucking question. Uh, <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> no, no, it's a val- very valid question. I feel like just an application process, like some applications are definitely more serious. Um, end to end. Right. So like hinge is like, very serious as an application even if you look at the algorithm like you only can interact with five people in a day um which is a very small amount and you have the ability to write comments on a person's profile so that's like very optimized and uh, like you're very like looking into like what that person's doing what their actual interests are because you're mm-hmm. leaving comments right um and you're trying to engage through conversation so that shows hinge is like very more dating oriented i mean dating and relationship oriented right Tinder, you're just looking at a profile, you have like over 100 swipes in a day, and you're just mindlessly swiping all day. So that's like more on a hookup aspect, I would say more so than than an application like Hinge. And then like Bumble is kind of somewhere in the middle. I've met people that have gotten relationships through Bumble. Mm -hmm. I've met people who've got relationships through Tinder too. Um, But for the most part, I would say the more relationship-esque apps is is definitely Hinge. I feel like Hinge also has like one of the best algorithms because you could filter by race and you could filter by Mm -hmm. uh, different specifics. People filter by height. There's, There's a bunch of different things where you could like um, where it's made it like more inclusive of like what you're looking for specifically. Yeah, um, I mean that. That's. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we got to we got to hit a break real quick, and then we're gonna continue on uh, a little bit. Um, I think maybe in the after after mm-hmm. the break we'll cover a little bit more on the specific physicalities of of like dating and what 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 that is like versus just uh, online. Dude, online, we online should definitely online. share some like stories or some shit. <laughs> I'm totally down if you oh, guys are. Oh. <laughs> all right, all right. Look out for that. Right, look out go. for that. Let's go. We're back. We're back. And as promised, we're going to run over a couple of our personal either dating stories or like something I was mentioning to the guys a little while ago, a little bit ago, too. was like, all right, if you had to tell yourself or maybe like a younger sibling or someone who was asking you for advice Mm. on uh, based on our own personal dating lives. But I know by no means are we maybe him experts technically speaking but you know i think we have a little bit of wisdom from experience and shit um and you guys can learn from that so yeah i don't mind going first i would uh i would tell them to go find khalid (laughs) and ask them how to do it number one (laughs) um yeah i'd probably say just like i think it's like kind of scary at first but uh it's actually dude the best advice on dating i actually got was from you actually oh really one of the best one of the best um you told me, what did you say? You were like, because it was, it kind of alludes to the deflecting thing, like projecting onto women, like women don't do this or whatever, or like they're like this or whatever. Uh, and then you, because I kind of was doing that. And then Jordan kind of said something. He was like, well, you have to think about it like you have wants and needs, but like the girl does too at the same time. Because I would always talk about like, 
I want a girl like this, or I'm trying to find like someone who's interested in this side or whatever. But he's like, well, why don't you like think about like what the other side is looking for? Because if you're so busy thinking about like what you want, then how are you supposed to like ever think about what she's looking for? You know? And I think that was a big shifter in my perspective. And you told me that shit. And I was like, damn, okay, well that's like really true. Like, and I carry that shit too. Sorry. I had to give kudos to you because that shit actually was like super impactful and shit. Can I get hired? (laughs) (laughs) I would say that. And then also just put yourself out there. It's fucking scary. But if like you can't communicate your interests or like what you're into and find somebody with those similar interests, if you're not like putting yourself out there and making it like communicating that to a broader audience. So yeah, that's what I would say. All right. Um, How about like a, I guess we could take turns on this one too. Like what, what's like a, What's like an awkward dating story or some shit that happened to you? Uh, dude. Well, I already talked about the charcuterie story on a separate podcast episode, oh, so yeah. I won't talk about that. Oh, yeah. I forgot and, about that one. Um, but that was probably the best dating story I had. Um, I can't think of... Oh, well, actually, there's a, there's awkward dates for sure. Um, I remember when I was in high school, um, there was this date where me and the chick like literally didn't talk to each other, but we held hands <laughs> for like an hour like we didn't like say anything bro i was just like because we were like (laughs) we were both in that mindset of like i think you're attractive and i think you're attractive but like we were way too nervous to say anything um and we just held hands for like an hour and at the end of the day it was just like okay bye like were you doing anything was it was like it was so we were supposed to go on a walk in the park and just like talk because it was like an initial date but i was like in high school and i was awkward and stuff um, but it, that was probably the most awkward day. I think about that day sometimes and I cringe and I'm like, fuck, what was I doing, bro? Like, do you, do what was she doing too? Like, <laughs> she, like, cause there was no attempt from either side. It was just like, let's go on a walk in the park and get to know each other. Okay, great. And then we literally just walked in the park when held hands for an hour. Like Dude, that was, was it. So like, and then I never had another date with, did her you, again. were you the one who initiated the handholding? I don't remember. Um, but I do remember, I, my first girlfriend ended up having a, she she might listen to this because I'm still friends with my first girlfriend, oh, okay or my first ex I mean um but she my first ex actually fought that chick <laughs> <laughs> so that was bro. fun okay so so like yeah what? so like then after that <laughs> date I was like all right this chick I can't do this so then I started dating my first ex at, my girlfriend at the time my ex. And then that chick got pissed and she came up and she was like, well, I don't want you dating that dude because I like him or some shit or whatever. I didn't hear what was said, but then I remember they both like go, should go away and I hear, ah, and then like one's like pulling the hair of the other one. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, Bro, you've been fought for. I know. I can, <laughs> I can actually say that shit, but I'm wow, just saying wow. like, that was probably the most awkward, but. Dude, my first ex is like hella dope though. You know, she's like a good person and shit. Yeah, like, she fought for you. Yeah, she dude, like, bro. dude, she's fucking, she's still dope though. That's like right her boyfriend it, is like super cool too, but, or her now boyfriend, but, um, would yeah, you, that would, would probably, him? would I date him? <laughs> uh, I could tell he, uh, does eyebrow threading. He has nice eyebrows. So maybe okay. I date him just for his eyebrows. Though. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> All right. So that's why I actually never heard that. Yeah. Story. So they, <laughs> Dude, I have these stories in my brain that are like untapped until these conversations happen, and then I just can't help. I'm like, oh my oh, god, oh god, that's fucking hilarious. So dude. That was um, that's how I got in a relationship with my first girlfriend. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, she oh, was awesome, dude. That's fucking great. I, I think okay, I'll go next because we got Mister Expert here. We got Doctor Hinge um, here, so he he'll he maybe he'll elaborate a little Ready more. To operate. So yeah, bro. Uh, I think so. Like actually, my advice was gonna be same thing as as right like if I, if my little brother who's like 10 years old when he grows grows a little bit older like this is something i would say to him too is that um spam risk what the fuck um and uh he like i would say the same exact things like hey look like think about it this way like you know um don't if the moment you start thinking like i want like i want to date a cute girl i want to date a hot girl i want to date mm-hmm. like that's when you already fucked up like you mm-hmm. you you're perceiving something on on them and then at the same time like it's like look first of all before anything else before you like if you are you first say that you're you're not attracting a girl period <laughs> but like uh, 
<laughs> okay, yeah, that's funny. Oh my God. But like the the main thing is like you got to think about it on your own personal levels. Like, are you what are you what are you personally doing? What is what is your attractive points? Right, like. Mm. First of all, like on a physicality level, not like not just like on the on like online profile. Like, are you hygienic? Are you clean? Mm. Do you smell good? Do you do you do you wash up? Um, on the second part of it, like, do you look good? Are you try look good? Do you go to the gym? Are you healthy? Mm. Like, you don't have to be the fittest person in the world, but like, you have do to you, try. You have to try. Mm. And then, like at the at the last point, I think is like, uh, do you have a career? like not necessarily specifically on the money point like do you have aspirations do you have mm -hmm. do you have things you want to talk about do you have things you want to you want to portray in the in a way like um or the things you, you have dreams like because that's important like even if you're like young college or high school like if you that's an attractive quality to say like hey look i know i'm in high school but i got dreams i got things i want to do that's cool that's fine if you even if you don't have a job then and then like the final thing is like dude are you sociable do you have friends like really ask yourself, like look at yourself in the mirror. It's like, do you have a friend? Yeah. And then before you find a girl, find a friend. <laughs> but that's that goes both ways too. I think for a guy and a girl, like, like make sure you have at least most of those like covered in a certain sense. Because like, if you don't, then you got to look at yourself. Like, what's your, what? How are you feeling? And how are you doing? How are you doing mentally? Right? Because mm -hmm. if you get in a relationship, you're gonna get that baggage, like Khalid said, on on someone else. So. That's my personal piece of advice. I would say number one thing is like, look, before you do anything, ask uh, like before you do anything, ask yourself like, what would the girl I ideally would want, mm -hmm. uh, based off of what she would think, would want from a guy, mm. and then from there work on that. And then when I just started doing that, I started realizing like, on the same on the same deal like, uh, this was COVID, so every obviously everything was online dating. Mm. I started getting much more interesting conversations with women. I started dating more girls and not just in the in the sense of like, oh, like hooking up, blah, blah. Like I had legitimate interesting conversations. And even though nice. it didn't work out, I could still text one of them and be like, hey, how you doing? Mm. And it would have been chill. So I think that's like the number one piece of advice. Um, and then what's your what's your dating story? Oh, fuck what do you have? All right. What are you going to lay on us right now? <laughs> Dude. Dude, I know he knows this because okay. they he made right. fun of me for they I they, get, they made fun loud. of me, they made fun of me for this for like six years. Six years. That's a all long right. So time. so there's two things. <laughs> Number one is that um all right uh God I hope she's not listening to this. Um, <laughs> I was dating this girl for a little bit like on and off. It wasn't really serious. It was just up and down, and we were just uh, we weren't really even considered dating. But it was like you know we would we would hook up, we would go on dates, but we never really made anything official. And then uh, she ghosted me all of a sudden. I was like, tried to hit her up. It's like, hey, what's what's up? What's going on? Never said anything. I was like, all right, fuck it, whatever. We, I moved on my life. Mm -hmm. Found out from uh, not necessarily a mutual friend, but like one of her neighbors that just saw her or something. I asked, I, I talked to, I talked to them, and she, and he was, and she, I was like, oh, how's she doing? She's like, oh, she's not a she anymore. What? <laughs> Wait, I don't know this story. I Wait, this I story. actually don't know this story. Well, I mean, not not. I was like, I was like. Excuse. I, I literally had a moment of the, excuse me <laughs> so, yeah yeah, yeah. She's I mean, like, that's a shocker for sure yeah she yeah. was like he, he, the my friend was like yeah she doesn't consider herself a she it was not like a she's like changed she's transgender uh, but uh it was more so that she just refuses to be called she or oh, her switch that Switch pronoun. okay. pronouns she okay. chose switch her pronouns and um, binary yeah, non-binary. She's non-binary. Um, again, perfectly fine. It was just really weird to feel like that <laughs> when the initial reaction. Yeah, like yeah. it was. I, I like I had a moment, like a hot like month, where I'm like, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> like it, 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 that is definitely one of the one of the one of the weirdest shocking moments I've had. And I was like, oh my god. Mm. <laughs> and then uh, second one, I think it's, this is the one where they made fun of me for six years. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So I dated, I, I was, I was, I had a long-term relationship with a girl from high school to college and uh, we eventually broke it off. There. Yeah. It was, it was for about almost two years, almost two years. And uh, how it broke it off was like six months before the relationship. She, uh, she cheated on me. Oh, I know this story. Yeah. She cheated on me. And then she then, uh, what's it called? Uh, and then she felt so guilty about it. She ended up trying to commit suicide. Oh wow! And then I had to, oh, and I had to drive to the hospital to come visit, go visit her. 
Uh, this is my first year in college. And then I was like, before I even met you, actually, huh. I had to drive over to meet, uh, to meet her. And her best friend called me and said, like, hey, yo, Jordan, I, I know, I know, whatever you hear, whatever you hear, just promise you, don't break it up with her. Yeah. Don't break it up with her. And, like, I went and I talked to, I was like, I talked to her. And I was, she was like, yeah, I'm so sorry. Like, uh, this and that. And, like, at that point, I was just so mentally exhausted from that relationship. So this mm -hmm. goes back to the thing. It's like, it's like, don't get in a relationship mm -hmm. until you're mentally stable yeah. and ready yourself. Yeah. Um, you can support each other. But, like, that's a certain point. I was just so tired of that burden mm -hmm. constantly. And then they, and then, um. I was like, I stayed with her another six months and it was just like, it was just, just to make sure she was good. And it was, it was rough. But like midway through those six months, she developed uh, schizophrenia as a, as a mental, as a mental illness, which is not funny at all. That's not like, not something to laugh at. And like, she's like, uh, and, and we had to deal with that. So I found out the girl I was dating at the time, uh, she cheated on me and then she tried to commit suicide and then after that, she like, we f we found out that she was a, uh, um, she was schizophrenic. And then from there, I eventually did break it off with her. And I was like, you know, honestly, at the end of it, I was like mentally like, okay, you know, it's like breath of fresh air. I'm happy to be to be uh, happy to be done with it all. And you know, uh, I hope she's well. Here from here now on, that she was well was just like a bad home experience for her. And then fast forward like four or four or five months, I'm starting to date a new girl. Like it's the it's on and off, but like, you know, we're we're having a good time. And then we watch this movie, this horror movie, and, and she and we come back home to one to her place and we just chilling. And um she was uh she was like uh we were just sitting there and she was like just we're, the horror movie was about like this one girl who had mental illness, uh, who had a like a mental illness or um and was like it caused her to have like it caused her to be like a ghost later in life or some shit like that. Mm. And my girl was just laying there and she was just like, Yeah, like, you know, I kinda I, I understand at the same time, like, you know, as someone with schizophrenia, it's like this. I was like, Holy shit, how did I end up dating? I'm just laying in bed and I'm thinking, How the fuck did I end up dating oh, two schizophrenic girls? So that girls? girl had schizophrenia too. Yeah. Okay. I had dated two girls in a row that had schizophrenia. Just so happens I'm laying there and she's telling me about her her life and everything, which to be honest, it probably was very important, everything and in my head. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> it's like, how the fuck did this happen twice? Yeah. Twice fucking. <laughs> Anyways, um, she's also the same girl who ghosted me later on, so and also changed her gender. So So uh yeah, that was uh that's my two interesting dating stories, I guess. That uh but um anyways. You heard my dating life. My advice is still the same. So, um, all right, Khalid, you go on. Yeah, no, for sure. So let's go ahead and go into some, like, dating advice and dating tips um, from Dr. Hinge. So um, <laughs> one of the main, like, tips I can give people, like, on any dating applications, guys, like, please listen up to this because this is, like, some real shit. Be yourself. Like, no one's really better than you at the end of the day. So it's, like, I don't know why people are out here projecting, like, the alternate personalities, putting these filters on their profiles, you know, just taking pictures in boats that they don't own. It's like, <laughs> just be yourself, bro. And like, it'll, it'll end up working out in the long end. I know it's kind of corny, but it's it's really what it is. And unfortunately, like, we're, we're told to have a different portrayal of themselves. Number two, always respect women um, on these platforms. Like, don't say disrespectful things um, because, like, the, the amount of, like, assault and, like, violence and, like, uh, women who experience rape and things like that, the numbers are astronomically high. So like, please don't add into those statistics and always ask for verbal consent. Um, yes means yes, right? So like that, that's essentially what it means. Um, so always ask for verbal consent is, is a huge thing. It's, it's a huge problem. It's an epidemic in, in this country. Um, and, and, and honestly, on, on a global scale as well, um, I would say another piece of advice is um, please, please have multiple pillows on your bed. Like, not one pillow like please get three to four pillows buy a bed frame um and if you don't gotta if you don't got a house <laughs> in your car make your car a little comfortable you know what i'm saying like, hey, you know please, so clean up like, clean up clean up clean up your house please take a shower you know what i mean it's just like just 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 basic things you know 
um, in, in life to do. Hey, then, I've got a question I think yeah. a lot of people would like the answer to. Yeah. I was just thinking about it. Um, sorry to interrupt your flow, though. It's, um, uh, I think a lot of dudes would love this uh, question, but what? So, like, let's say you match with somebody because yeah. it's going to happen inevitably. Like, what do you, how do you like start that conversation? Because I feel like that's like a question I feel like a lot of dudes like have, you know? Oh, like, dude. do you like throw a gif out of Well, I'm, I'm asking the Dr. Hinge. No, 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 no. I just, I just oh. had a flashback of all the fucking random pickup lines I used. Yeah. So, <laughs> do you, do you go with a cheesy pickup line? Do you shoot a gif off? Because I think that's like kind of like visually appealing. Like, what do you, what's like the go to? Do you think? I would say, there's a couple different things. So predominantly like on hinge, I would specifically compliment things that people have control of. Um, so like their outfit, uh, earrings, makeup, things like that, things that you physically have control of because the things that you don't have control of, you can project an insecurity mm. and that can end up really bad for you in the long run. Um, as well as asking a question directly about either something that they're, they're interested in that you're also generally interested in. Don't be asking questions that like you're not interested in, but like you look at the profile and you see something that's interesting and you ask them a question about that certain thing and then dive in deeper into an actual conversation uh, more so than just saying, yo, what's good? Or, hey, what's up? Like, bro, no, like you, you got to think of actual conversation because girls get four times as many matches as men do on these platforms. There's four times as many men as women. Um, and just a preference a little bit about like dating profiles and like just to like actually like talk about like the history of like dating apps in general. I don't think a lot of people know this, but like dating applications were prominent in the LGBTQIA community plus before they were prominent in the hetero community um, because of like, you know, the discrimination and things like mm -hmm. that of like that the gay community had to go through um, the LGBT community went through. So a lot of it. A lot of the applications and stuff and like the, the whole idea of like applications, dating apps did start within that community. So just paying respect to that community as well. Nice. Um, but <clears throat> nah, yeah, that's what I would say. Sorry. Yeah, I, I didn't want to interrupt your flow. I was just like trying while you were talking. I was thinking like, what's like the question most people would ask? I feel like that's probably like the one I yeah. feel like I hear the most anyways. Honestly, I think how like the one I use for my my uh, my girlfriend right now uh, was Dude, I was I was so shit at all of this stuff too. Like I didn't I didn't know you back back then. And so what I literally <laughs> said, I literally just said like, "Hey, look, I'm shit at this. I'm shit at this texting, all this stuff." Be direct, be honest. Yeah, I was like, "I'm shit at all this texting and stuff." And you cool, just grabbing boba and we can just talk. Nice. Sometimes that's just all you all you have to be is fucking direct and honest. Like I don't understand why people are out here like thinking it's like some type of like weird like. Mind Ooh, I gotta whatever. be like, nah, bro. Just be yourself, and like things will just fall in line. You know that that that's just what it is, and like that that's why I'm in a relationship now, because like I was just myself, and that that's what worked, right? Like even my own self, I was projecting things that weren't necessarily true. Um, yeah, it, it's something that we all deal with. Just be authentic, be yourself. Number four, Jordan alluded to this a lot, um, is like be happy with yourself emotionally. Take care of your mental health. Make sure that you're ready for a partner before you go out there. Um, if you've dealt with things in the past, seek therapy, you know what I'm saying? Like handle your mental health issues and, you know, things like that. And that that's really what's important here because you're, you're sometimes you, you just aren't ready for a partner because of traumas that you experience. And then last final tip that I'm going to give out is that make sure that whatever relationship you're in, you feel comfortable enough to leave. Um, and a professor actually told me that in college. And, you know, it really stuck with me because it's like, if you don't feel like you can leave that situation, then it's not healthy. Huh. It's yeah. not healthy. Well, um, I think we only got a little bit more time left, so I want to cover this. Is this interesting, juicy story <laughs> that Khalid's been avoiding? Nice. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know the story, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. But you so, apparently okay. know this shit already. Okay, so time for the story. All right, how does it start? I'm gonna just I'm gonna say this to my girl if you're watching. <laughs> I, I love you, and this is before I met you. Um, so I just want to go on a preference that. Um, but anyways, uh, so exposing. COVID. I got so okay. The whole company got COVID because um, there was hella people in the office that were anti-vaxxers, um, as as they are. Um, so we all got COVID. I was down bad for like three weeks. I'm talking bedridden. Like, I even had After Effects. It was horrible. Like, my COVID experience, worst, uh, probably out of anybody in the office, arguably. Um, and I was just down bad. So, you know, it's it's over. Um, again, COVID's <laughs> finally recovered. Um, I still don't have an appetite. You know, it's like a couple days. It's the day after I recovered from COVID. 
So what I do is um, the company has like a uh, company reimbursements and I'm, you know, young, 20 years old. Um, it's my first job in tech, still young, but yeah, I was younger <laughs> and more, uh, more, uh, more crazy. Um, so, uh, we, we had a company reimbursements and I bought a COVID test and then I bought a box of condoms and I asked the lady for separate receipts. I swear to God I did, bro. But she gave me one receipt. So I was like, fuck. So I just posted in the group chat. And uh, one of my coworkers, I was like, for company reimbursements. And one of my coworkers, like, oh my uh, one of the older, more wise coworkers at the time, uh, hits me up on Slack individually. And it's like, bro, did, did, did you not did you not see what you have on your receipt? I was like, bro, what do you mean? Like, it's just the, the COVID test. I, I, they're like, nah, like, you got a box of condoms on their seat so like, <laughs> I, they just made fun of me and i was like okay all right so i deleted the photo and i was like all right i know what i'm gonna do i got a pen out and i like i scribble out the pen i try to scribble it out but it's just horribly done and i don't realize bro like i'm tired i'm not going to date bro like we just worked an eight and a half hour shift like i'm just trying to have fun you feel me and like um basically what happened was like i scribble it out i scribble it out and they're like and then like this another co-worker hits me up and, and the even the an even older co-worker at the time um who like hits me up? He's like, bro, that was that that I could I could still see it. <laughs> <laughs> so I just delete the photo and I'm like, bro, fuck the company reimbursement at this point. <laughs> like, yeah, y'all can keep the twenty. I never got my company reimbursement for that COVID test. Hey, thank God we <laughs> didn't have an bucks. HR at the time, <laughs> bro. That company, like, nah, bro. Like, it, HR could not save that company, dog. Like, there was so much shit going on, bro. Like, everyone in that company would be down on HR, bro. But anyways. All right. Well, dude. All right. I, I sorry to rush it off. Hey, um, I, we're running low on the time on the cam on the camera as well. So, wanted to end it off with uh, a couple main things. Was number one, like everything we talked to him about here in terms of our advice and our stories and everything. It's just use it as a tool. Think about it how you want. And obviously, this is from the perspective of two guys or three guys in their mid to young twenties who've experienced this. So, take it with whatever grain of salt you'd like. So, whatever experience you've had. So want to keep that clear. Um, and also, hey, thank you all for listening, for anyone who is listening out there. Um, Joy, was that, the, that wasn't the end of the story, bro. Oh, what, wait, what the fuck? No, oh, it wasn't. Yeah, oh, let shit. him go. We have no. time. It's fine. Oh, okay, whatever. Yeah, that, was, that wasn't the end of the story. I'm sorry, Joy, to cut go. you off. No, I, I, I wanna, no what's up? Yeah. No, nah, it gets worse. Um, so <laughs> um, I go out, and, um, and then I go on a date with this girl, and uh, we're going to get pizza. Um, place in San Diego. It's like right by my apartment, and this is like our third or fourth date. And like you know, we're we're like texting, like you know, and um, you know, like like that. You know, what I'm saying. So like, I'm I'm hyped. Obviously, I, I bought that box of condoms, um, and <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we. So they they're like, oh, I found like edibles in the back of my closet. I don't know how old they were, and they're like, I was like, okay, for sure. I was like, I haven't got high in three weeks because like I have COVID, so like I don't want to be putting. It's just not. Why would you smoke while you you're having like you you can't breathe? That just doesn't yeah. make sense. Um, so I was like, all right, for sure, I'm gonna stone. And I never take edibles, by the way. Like mind you, like I, I I've smoked a lot of weed in my life. I'm a stoner, but like I don't take edibles. Um, because every time I take edibles, some shit happens. And some shit definitely happened. So <laughs> um, I took a little ass piece of this edible, and she was like, "That's all you're gonna take again, guys. Be <laughs> nice, yourself, bro. Dude. Be yourself. Nice, okay, be yourself. All right. Learn from me. Learn from me. Learn from me. All right. Be yourself. <laughs> so I'm like, "Fuck it. All right. It's a capped edible. Shit was like a uh, hundred milligrams. I don't know, bro. It was a lot. So I was chilling, and then I ate that slice of pizza. The first thing I ate of the day. Another mistake. You always eat." You know yeah. what I'm saying? You can't just take an edible and an empty stomach. That shit hit you like a truck or what? Not yet. So um, I get that slice of pizza, eat that slice of pizza. We go back to my apartment. I'm sitting down. And then I just, bruh, like that, sh I just feel it. And it's just like all my bones and everything. We're watching South Park um, because that's like <laughs> my favorite show. And um, so I'm like, fuck, like, what, do, what do I do? What do I do? I start looking around the house. I was like, I'm way too high right now. Um, and then, like, I was like, Ozzy Osbourne said to chew peppercorns one time in an interview. So I'll grab some peppercorns. I'm sorry, chewing them. Whoa. It's like, this shit is oh. not working. <laughs> I was like, I'm hella high. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to just go on a walk, bro. I need to switch my environment. You know what I'm saying? Were you with the girl still? Like, you Yeah, yeah, no, she was, her, she was in the what? apartment. Yeah, no, no. So I'm going to I'm I'm oh, keep sorry, going. So, I'm like, sorry. we go on a walk. We walked to Balboa <laughs> Park, which is like right next to my house at the time. And we walked to Balboa Park, and I'm walking to the park. She's like, why are you walking so weird? 
And I was like, oh, like I'm sorry. Like, I don't know. Like, and I'm, <laughs> I'm like, sorry. I'm an extroverted. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know what to do. Um, and then, like, basically, like, um, <laughs> like she's like, why are you walking so weird? And then she starts asking me all these, like, super personal questions that are just really weird. Again, don't project things that you don't want to talk about on the third day. She's like, so what was it like? Were, were you abused as a child? Like, what was it like with like, your father? Whoa. Like, father passing away. It was just like. It was like, what was it like, like you're with your father passing away at a young age? I'm like, why are you asking these really deep questions right now? And I'm hella high. So it just made my anxiety yeah. tenfold. And I go back to the apartment and we're chilling. And then I'm about to start throwing up. And I'm like, you know what? Like, you got to go. I'm going to call my homie. Like, I need to be with my homie right now. And she's like, no, I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave. I was like, honestly, like, I'm starting to trip out a little bit. Like, um, can you please leave? Like, I'm sorry. I'll pay for your lift. You know, chivalry ain't dead. Um, so I'm like, pay for your lift. Um, it's fine. Nice. So she's like, she finally convinced her to leave. And um, I start throwing up as soon as she leaves. And she, she steals my flannel, bro. This is a $75 flannel off the floor. She steals my flannel and then takes my phone charger. And I'm like, bro, why did you steal my flannel and my phone charger? And then like, she's like, oh, I was on accident. I was on the floor. I thought it was mine. Bro, you weren't wearing a flannel when you got here. Okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. I don't care. Like I'm hella, I'm hella, high. I'm hella high. And then like, my uh, eye you know, like she wanted just you to ask her later, like, That's hey, exact- can I get the flannel and the charger back? And then she's like, yeah, you can come over and like grab it from me or some shit. That's exactly what happened. It was even, yeah, it was worse than that though. But like, anyways, like I, my friend ends up picking me up. And I'm hella high, and I just start throwing up in his house, and I'm eating crackers with a blanket over my head, and I'm watching Childish Gambino freestyles. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> pound cake and shit and oh yeah she, fucking pancake she pound hits cake. me up if y'all haven't seen that pound cake video by childish game you know please tap in and see that she hits me up and then like she's like yo can i um can i uh you know i'm trying to like give you a a gift quote unquote um she's like you know i was like Whoa. give you your flannel and everything but like you know i'm trying to like <laughs> still trying to fuck with me i'm like no yeah. y'all literally you literally see me in the worst condition of my possible life like i'm sorry i I, I'm never gonna see you again. Like, yeah, that's tough. Like, you know, what I'm saying, like, the, that that's all, folks. Like, <laughs> I'm not hitting you back up. Like, we're like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I was like, that was just too much for me. It was, it was, I was awkward. Like, asked me about that dad. I'm like, bro, I'm good. Um, and then you know, that was that was under that. So yeah. Damn. So you never got that flannel back or what? Nah, bro. You never got the phone charger. I forgot that phone charger. Thank God it was one of them cheapy little ones from Amazon, bro. That shit was like eight dollars. Oh, so fuck, was... dude. I did. I thought that was the, and I did, actually didn't know that. So fuck, dude. Yeah, bro. Yeah. I knew. Obviously, I knew the condom one. <laughs> I was there. I was part of that conversation. Yeah, you dude. fucking. Never you, got to use those condoms, dude. You love your flannels too. I feel like nine out of ten times I see you, you're always fucking rocking a flannel. This is like the one exception right now. Yeah, I wore this Mario show for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and these motherfuckers did not wear any game. Oh wait. Oh no, no, no. no, no. It's just Jordan over there. Hey, I've yeah. got my Mew shorts. Hey, on. look, nerd in any way possible, bro. Any way possible. No, but no, 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 hey, no. Uh, <laughs> it's any more any other stories that we're good? Uh, no, I mean like we all told our dating stories. Yeah, and stuff, yeah. Unless Andy wants to tell a dating story. <laughs> He's just shaking his head. <laughs> we got seven minutes left, so. <laughs> oh my god. Well, hey, uh, thank you for coming. Sorry, sorry for cutting you off. I thought I thought that was the end of it, nah, dude. I bro, didn't know I that was. Like, I know. I wish it was the end of it. And I was like, I'm not gonna not only tell half the story. I was like, it's not. Gonna happen, bro. If they want the story, they'll go get the story, bro. Dude, you know I'm such I, I such an it, honorable I, man, bro. Keep it a buck, bro. I'm I'm honorable, but when I'm it's, unless I'm selling a fake fucking product, I'm not honorable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey. We gotta thank, do our plugs, yeah. Yeah, yo, thank you all for uh, thank you all for listening. Thank you for for tuning in. Sorry for almost cutting off halfway, midway through. Um, again, this is the Gain EXP podcast, the podcast where we talk about you know uh, nerd, fitness, gaming, anime, anything under the sun that we really want to talk about. Case in point. <laughs> um, mm. But hey, appreciate you all for listening. This has been uh, I'm George or um, Jordan. All my plugs are plugs. Plugs Plugs are George or underscore EXP. Yeah. So most importantly, follow the main Gain EXP Fitness channel, Gain EXP Fitness. And that's on Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram, most importantly, because that's where we're active right now. TikTok. Oh, yeah. And TikTok now, too. Yeah. No, I was going to say that, bro. (laughs) And TikTok. He's the man who told us we were old. The same could be be said for my personal uh, tag, which is Doggo. So it's going to be Doggo underscore EXP. 
Um, and is there anything you want to plug, Cully? This is your chance. Yeah, no, for sure. So, like, I don't, I mean, like, the company, I kind of just do that, like, freelance. I don't have, like, a website or anything right now. But um, I kind of just do it on site. I'm busy as hell with school. Um, so, but my personal IG, if you want to tap in with that, it's public. Um, it's Khalid. So, it's spelled like DJ Khaled. You know what I'm saying? And then my last name, Alamandeen, not spelled like the dictator. You know what I'm saying? Not spelled like that. I mean, our, our last names are similar, but it's... Uh, a as in Didn't alpha. Didn't have to bring that up. A as in alpha. <laughs> L as in Lima. A as in alpha. M as in mouse. E as in echo. L as in Lima. D as in delta. I as in India. And N as in Nancy. Fuck. I don't know the the whole shit, but yeah. Tap <laughs> 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 we're gonna fucking get together okay. bro together like you gotta put them together there's no underscore nothing bro just... did not have to bring up the dictator <laughs> <laughs> bro it's val i'm arab so like bro no one can really get mad at me bro <laughs> all right we're signing out now we hit all the right. box all right colleagues gotta do it oh shit yeah hit that shit oh my Fuck, god not hard. Oh, like, lighter, 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 lighter 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 there you go, go.